If you share things, must everybody get the same amount? Yes. Absolutely, hey. Because it wouldn't be fair if you share something and Cabello gets seven and Rilobogili gets four and you get two. Is that fair? No. Now, everybody must get the same amount. I'm now, teaching division with reminder. In uh, grade two, we have all kinds of di division methods. We have division where there's nothing left over. And one for you. And then we split everything and it becomes a fraction. But today's lesson is division with remainder. When you share things, we use the sign divided by. And we always try to make sure that we use the word share. There's another special word that goes with that word share. How? Equally. My mommy says, you need to give each friend the same amount. And these are my friends. One for you. And one for you. And one for you. Did you each one get the same amount? Yes. Right. Why are you happy? Because we got the same amount. Right. If I had given you two and you got nothing, how would you feel? Sad. Sad, eh? What did you tell him? That's not fair. That's right, and you'll ask him for it back, eh? Give it... There we go. Normally we have to go from the concrete to the abstract. Mm -hmm. Now this is a visual concrete exercise with actual items to share. For my introduction lesson, I normally bring a fun element into it. I'll take out a few things for the children to count out. I'll have a few children standing in front, and we will do some sharing. They'll find that when they share the items in front, one child normally gets too many items. I'll then have the remainder police come up in front. She will take the additional item away and put it in a cupboard. She will tell the item, you remain there. Well done. Normally I'll put that some on the board. We have seven packets of jelly tots. We shared them between three friends. Each friend received and how many did we put away? One. One. Remainder. Remainder. One. One. That will be done quite a few times. Over and over again for the children to get used to the vocabulary itself of the word remainder. How many do you have, Nikwa? Four. And you, Keegan? Three. And you, Sinti? Three. And you, Talia? Three. Hey, that's not fair. What must we do? Give me this one. And then you go put it in the cup. But sometimes in between you should give them the opportunity to see that when you share things, there's not always a reminder. And they have to be aware of that as well. Okay, go and fetch your beans, fetch your beans. Fetch your beans, fetch your beans. White boards out. Your board, guys, if this is your board. We're going to make a little square at the bottom if there's a remainder. We are going to use four people today. So I need four smiley faces. Somewhere on your board, you must have a space for your sum. So if you get the number 24, it will be divided by four. You'll have an answer. And please don't write out the whole word remainder. You'll write rem and you tell me what the remainder is. My children normally work in teams. One child works with a whiteboard, and the other child works with the beans. Walk around with pre-made cards already with numbers on them. You can use them for any multiple. You can use them for multiples of threes or multiples of fours. And they use these numbers as part of their division sums. So if they received a card from me that says 25, the sum will be 25 divided by four. They'll share this, these beans equally on the board and then write the answer down at the bottom. Always encourage them to double check that they have the correct amount of beans. Walk around. If you see there's an error, don't give them the answer. Just tap on the board and then they will double check to make sure that the answer was correct. Most of the time, they just counted out the beans inaccurately. What do we do, Keegan, to make sure that we have the correct amount of beans? He's putting groups and then he counts all over again so he can make sure that, that you have the right amount of um, beans. Using beans for division is a very effective way to teach division sums. It's cost effective, it's cheap. Children actually take ownership over their beans. You'll find that when one falls on the floor, they actually say, hey, that's my bean. You have your worksheet and you need your pen. 
so. Once we are done playing with the beans and working out the sums and understanding the division concept, it's normally good to do an application worksheet activity. Make sure that you hand out this worksheet and explain very carefully how the worksheet works. And lots of children now do not have to use their beans anymore. They can just do it via drawing. The reason why your worksheet has a block is because some of you would prefer to draw. And all of that is divided by four. So if you have the block on your worksheet, the first sum looks like this, and you have a block. You can draw the four faces. If you don't want beans laying all over the show, and you take the 16 angulani and you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Did you share all of it equally? And then you count. One, two, three, four. Look at it, everybody get the same amount? 16 divided by four equals four. And the answer to that sum, remember, I always said if there's no space, you write four and you make a circle. Then I know where to mark. Great, okay. two worksheets should comprise of a variety of activities or it should have differentiation on them. And then you should cater for the easy, the medium, and the more difficult opportunities for each learner so that they can show off their skills and show me what they can do. The worksheet should be laid out in a neat way so that the children can understand where they must work. You'll find out that my worksheet has blocks on them because some children need to draw. But if you don't have the blocks, they'll draw all over the page. So the blocks gives them direction as to where to do each sum.